Benjamin uh, Beach and Luke Perez. Please come forward. Ben Beach with the Community Benefits Law Center and the Partnership Board of Families. We're a national network of community-based organizations that develop and promote strategies to build community power and reshape regional economies to benefit workers and neighborhoods. Now, much of our work promotes a model that was pioneered in Los Angeles with the adoption of the Construction Careers Policy of the Community Redevelopment Agency. And at the heart of that model is the simple principle that when the city pays for construction, low-income communities of color should have access to quality jobs with the wages, benefits, and training that build middle-class careers. Now, the measure before you today, which reflects years of collaborative work by community, labor, and environmental groups and city departments, embodies that principle and further positions the city as a national leader. While everyone is talking about the green economy, with this ordinance, Los Angeles is defining, putting in place a program that both greens our city, starting with the communities that need green most, and ensures that green jobs are good jobs, accessible to all segments of our community. It has been a delight to work with the Apollo Alliance, the Mayor's Office, the Council, the Chair, and staff on this measure, and we urge your unanimous support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, council members. My name is Luca Perez, and I am the special representative for the Piping Industry Progress and Education Trust Fund. And I'm here today, uh, along with some of our UA members, uh, just to let you know that we're in support of these of this green building retrofit ordinance, and we are committed to being a true champion for clean, a clean environment, um, healthy communities, and also high road, high paying jobs. So we urge you to please support this ordinance because it's a good thing to do. Okay? Thank you. You know, I don't know why, Luke, but I, I just have this feeling that we might prove this. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, the guy just came in. He's too, he's too tall. Thank you. No. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be under five eight. Anyway, I didn't see Cheryl Parisi. Is Cheryl here? I didn't see her. Okay, that's that's the end of uh, comment for uh, this item. I would like to just say this that um, when I was in the state legislature, from time to time. I would always say that the winds in this country blow from the west to the east. Now, it was a catchy phrase, but it was really, really accurate. And I think that this city um, uh, takes the lead. Uh, we need to uh, commend the, the, the president. Before I got here, when they, the president and other members of this council had the foresight where we had the first, uh, one of the first, if not the first in the country, and this is a, uh, a follow-up, I think, that, that is the first uh, in the nation. And with a, a president who is committed to creating sustainable jobs that are going to be good jobs, and it's my understanding that there's millions and millions of dollars that have been set aside for this type of thing, the city of Los Angeles today will put itself, will, I think we will put ourselves first in line. So I'd like to uh, thank all of the folks from uh, Scope and Jim and um, give them the credit that they uh, deserve so you can give them a round of applause. <laughs> it wasn't uh, uh, too long ago we had a, a meeting, well maybe it was a long time ago, but we had a meeting in, in, in my office discuss a variety of things and it was, this concept was suggested by them and so I bought in and then we worked together uh, in, in true partnership to refine this and I, I'm excited about this and again want to thank everybody. I think that this does show that or 
organizations from the community can be part of the solution. And uh, if, when they really want to participate, it's one thing. We, we've all dealt with community groups that are protesting this and protesting that. But to have organizations come together to try to do something that works, to try to do something that actually helps people, I think is a testament to the, to the good work of uh, all of the partners in this project. Yeah, if you got your cell phone on, get on. <laughs> Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, let me thank first by singling you out. Uh, it was just after you took over as chair that you said, this is something I'm going to get done. I heard Wes when he says he's going to get some things done, gets it done. So congratulations. Thank you. This is a very exciting moment because for anybody who's cynical about government and asks the question, does government really matter, and does City Hall get anything done, this is pretty powerful testament here today. Not only are we getting it done for Los Angeles, we're getting it done for the nation and hopefully inspiring other municipalities to do the same thing. We were the first uh, big city in the country to pass a green building ordinance for our own buildings to show that new buildings could be done. We, we then passed the most far-reaching last Earth Day uh, ordinance for the private sector, so all new Buildings have to be built in a green way, so our building trades and our community groups were an important part of that coalition. And now to go back to the retrofit is so critical because why should those of us who are in older neighborhoods or older city buildings not be part of the green revolution? And when we look at uh, moving forward right now, um, just one great statistic, when we had the convention center certified as LEED, we almost doubled the amount of square footage in the country that was LEED certified with a single building. So if we only look at what's happening in the new buildings, we're forgetting all the energy waste in the old buildings. So it's a great model. And the same coalition, I want to thank you know, the, the unions and agenda and scope, Chevron and everybody who came together first on city jobs to change the way that we hire. Second, they came to me when I chaired this committee and said, let's look at a career level. Two council districts that are specifically represented, uh, but I'm sure not limited to them. I'd like to add that we have uh, representative from Council District 6 on the Green Building Jobs Task Force. Um, I do chair the committee on gangs. I do chair the committee on IT, uh, GS. Uh, I did chair the committee that, uh, that oversaw the Department of Water and Power, that uh, forced the Department of Water and Power to finally uh, put in writing their renewable energy portfolio plan, which they promised for years and years and years they never did. Uh, I happen to be an electrical engineer. I happen to be a former business owner who has hired local people in Pacoima, where I grew up, and I happen to be uh, someone who, uh, whether I like it or not, is not going to give up on the juvenile justice issues for the city of Los Angeles. So with that nexus, I'd like to um, ask that we have a representative from Council District 6, in addition to what is already in the process, which is uh, Council District 10 and District 13 having a representative. And also, notwithstanding, uh, that would also um, make sure that someone from the ballot is uh, on, on the task force as well. Okay, I, uh, I don't have a problem with that, but you know, maybe <laughs> we're going to take this up later in council. Why don't we have staff chit chat? We'll make the amendment. We'll make the amendment, Mr. Cardis, in council. Fair enough? We'll make the amendment, and when this goes to council report, which will be today, so we'll have the staff figure out how to work that out, because I don't have a problem with that. Mr. Reyes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I want to congratulate everyone. I know how hard it is to uh, go from concept to actual implementation, so it's been a long haul, and I want to congratulate the Chair and everyone involved. I was reading the uh, message from our city attorney, and in it, there's a reference to the Workforce and Construction Trust Fund, and the saying that it was not necessary. I just wanted to understand more what was the rationale or the reason for it. My assumption was we want every resource possible to help facilitate and sustain a few kinds of efforts and a trust fund, you know, is about resources. So I just want to understand what was the thought process and why was it deemed unnecessary? Well, we are anticipating that this program will go on on the basis of federal grant and state grant that is money available to uh, the government. And to deal with those issues, we have a grant ordinance, but we don't need that. And trust fund uh, ordinance is necessary to anticipate based from uh, private entities, and I don't think that's a matter of anticipating the project. I think you're into receiving funds from the federal government. Okay. That's my understanding. 
It doesn't preclude of us doing it in the future. No, it doesn't. Okay. And I just want to understand the, the timing here. I want, I want to respect the thought process and the integrity of the work here, so obviously I'm going to support this. But uh, I understand the rationale. It doesn't preclude us from doing it in the future. That's right. All right. Okay. Ms. Finner. I have something that uh, I'd like the, the task force to also make sure that they, they include and focus on as well is uh, we need to make sure that it's coordinated with the efforts of the SWERP and zero waste plans that are currently undertaken by the Bureau of Sanitation. Uh, I haven't seen any agendas or anything like that, but make sure that that's part of uh, the efforts as well, as well, coordinating with the Department of Sanitation. Okay, fine. So seeing no more questions, then uh, Without objection, we will adopt the city attorney's report draft ordinance. Uh, included will be Mr. Cardinal's last uh, set of amendments. So, uh, so let it be written. So let it be done. What does that bring us to? Do we have anything? I think we have passed. We get it. Passed. Wait, get it <laughs> Signed up for public comments, so I think we're going to let you be the, the uh, cleanup. <laughs> now you can always rescind your card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Third, the Watts Gang Task Force Gang Prevention and Intervention and Stopping Violence Helping Our Kids. I asked you if you would come to one of their meetings. I told them you. Yes, and you would. We have it at 10 o'clock on Monday at Jensen's district office. They asked me to ask you exactly when you would come. How about next Monday? Tony Councilman Tony Gardner's came, and I think it's a great thing. The second thing, recently the DWP sent a stimulus package to LA City residents that included two energy saving light bulbs. It was great. Also, one of the greatest valuable tools, a water saving calculator to help save water. I think they should visually do a demonstration to show the public how to use it and educate them in saving water, keeping their bills down. What a great idea. I tried it, it works. And also, there's a thing on Citizens Guide to legislative process how people can help introduce bills to our California State Legislature. And one, one other thing I have here, uh, I'll do the easy part first. Senator Robert Wright, your friend, speaks very highly of you, gave you 30 minutes of his valuable time on the issue. Okay, uh, my name is Akitina Versosa. Um, I'm the executive director of the Worker Center, but I'm also a parent of one of the children at Echo Park People's um, Child Care Center uh, located in Lake Shore um, in Echo Park. Um, and I'm here um, be as a parent uh, because our funding is really in danger of being cut. And it's not on the it wasn't on the agenda today, but we just want to get out of it. This is something that our, our parents are mobilizing around and really trying to uh, be in dialogue with the city to try and uh, preserve funds for uh, nonprofit child care centers like a uh, play group, um, the Echo Park, so really people's child care center, uh, because it's really going to affect especially the low income children who are subsidized in our child care center. And the plan that would take away the funds um, does not provide any. We've gone through cuts where our budget has less, has gone down less than half. We've lost our food program. And um, this extra seventy thousand dollars would uh, really hurt us hard. We've really been trying to mobilize to do our part for fundraise, and we, you know, actively bring that into our center too, to be really uh, devoted to diversity, especially uh, you know class diversity. Um, but we also need the city to uh, to stay uh, to remain committed to us and to uh, continue with the dialogue and how we can uh, help preserve these really important services instead of, you know, gentrifying out all these services because Echo Park Center Lake still has a lot of low-income families that need these services. 
So um, that's why I'm here today to, to also keep that in front of you. And we will be here when it's on the agenda. We'll mobilize with Hilltop and the other child care centers. Thank you. And just so you know, I gave an instruction earlier to, to CDD to look on for both Hilltop and the group. Okay, thank you very much. No.
seconds without objection. Next order of business. Commendatory resolution. Ms. Rule Moose and Ms. Hahn seconds without objection. Those two will be approved. Commend through the agenda. Before we move to the attendance, there's a request to continue several of the items that were sent. They're standing um, around. Yeah, that was there. Some, some of the council people not here yet either. Oh. They started about like two or three minutes ago. Oh. I guess you look up there and find out what's the next. What's the next? To uh, make California a global pioneer where related to limiting greenhouse uh, gas emissions. We all know they come from uh, vehicles and they are contributor to global warming. I have never, members, ever been in such a fight like that in my life. Every lobbyist in Sacramento was hired to oppose this act. The opposition, as we were discussing and debating this, were on the 
telephones to right-wing uh, radio stations asking for thousands of Californians to call their elected officials and tell them not to support this bill. This bill was sponsored by Fran Pavley and co-authored by myself. When we finally got to the point where we had the 41 votes to pass this bill, my staff urged that we take the vote. I said, no. I said, we've got to wait a little longer because I had learned a lesson from my former boss, Councilman Nate Holden, that said, when you pass something as tough as this, you need to get one extra vote for the double cross. So instead of 41 votes, I walked around and found an extra vote. We put the vote up, it passed, but not by 42 votes, by 41 votes. Somebody took a, a pass, just like my old boss said would happen. Also, as just an aside, my staff, for those of you that don't know, they're good people and we joke and we play pranks on each other. So we passed this landmark legislation and they tell me, President Clinton is on the telephone. He wasn't president then. I didn't believe him. I let him stay on the line on hold for three minutes. And then I picked up the phone. Yeah, her, this is Bill, okay? And it was the president. I am so glad that the winds in this country blow from the west to the east because as I stand to you today, there is a partnership and cooperation to have us move forward and have Los Angeles be the trendsetter. Let Los Angeles show the rest of the world that we can make a green economy work for the city and for its residents. So today, we become a national pioneer again. Members, we have a piece of legislation that has an environmental component, an economic workforce development component, a savings uh, component, and uh, at a minimum, we should have energy savings on water uh, of about 20 percent. We will create the first uh, green job training program, and everybody knows it's President of the United States is committed, committed to taking this nation in a green direction. We vote yes on this legislation. We put Los Angeles at the front of the line. That's right. So I ask for a unanimous vote. And before I do that, I have to thank you. Again, the people in the yellow shirts, the people in the orange shirts. All right. I have to thank you. Stand up, stand up, guys. Give yourselves, guys. Thank you. 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 And uh, Council Member Greg Smith and I have purple shirts. So the purple shirts. <laughs> quarterback on this. I want to thank the other council people who worked on this with me and the mayor's office. And again, this is Los Angeles sending a message to not, in fact, not just the country, but to the world that we, we will get it right and we will lead the way. Of a yes vote today lays out a blueprint for the rest of the world. I ask for a nine vote. Thank you all.
lot of work, had a good productive job that they can focus on. Uh, thanks to your effort, her, the effort to your staff, uh, the city's going to start doing that. Now, at the end of the day, I believe, and I think all of you believe, um, government is not going to be the ultimate engine here. It's going to be the private sector. But this is an opportunity where government can really sort of ignite the fuse, lead the charge, sort of catalyze it, and, and, and show the way to everybody. That's what we're going to do with this program. I congratulate all of you for being here. Thank you very much, Mr. West. Thank you. Well, I also rise to uh, thank everyone for making this happen. And clearly, uh, the green jobs are the jobs of the future. And uh, coming up with a way to have a uh, reliable, sustainable, green workforce for the future is key um, to our own economic stimulus here in Los Angeles. And you know, sitting on our new uh, ad hoc committee on the city council that is looking at the economic stimulus package and is trying to prepare Los Angeles to receive a lot of those funds. One of the questions on every single application is, will this money go towards green jobs? And that gives you a competitive advantage when you're applying for grants. It gives you a competitive advantage when you're trying to receive the economic stimulus package. So I really do uh, think that this is uh, such a great initiative for Los Angeles. And I just want to make sure, uh, Mr. Weston, that uh, when these, uh, when the workforce, when the uh, task force is forming, when the hearings are being held, that we certainly include the airport and the Port of Los Angeles. I mean, both those entities certainly have massive uh, green initiatives. And there does need to be a workforce that supports them, particularly in the Port of Los Angeles. Um, we have uh, a potential $50 million community benefits fund uh, that will go to helping mitigate uh, the negative impacts of the port operations in Wilmington and San Pedro. A lot of that will be, uh, you know, air filtrations and, uh, you know, sound, well, everything that, that will help prevent uh, the negative impacts of the port. We need a whole workforce to begin doing this. It's going to be massive. There's going to be a lot of homes in that area that are going to need to be retrofitted mitigate uh, pollution. Uh, also, in the port, we're, we're uh, growing a port uh, technology incubator center. We're going to be looking at new inventions that will actually ultimately clean the air better, but we need a workforce to make that happen. So I just want to make sure we include the port and the airport uh, as we move forward. Those, are, uh, those two entities are laying the groundwork. Uh, to provide for this next generation of green collar jobs. Great. And instead of this being a blueprint for the rest of the nation, this is a green print.
on the applicants, also our chair of committee, Weston, for his hard work. But for me, what's just as significant is that in the day and age when we have industrial uses adjacent or mixed with residential uses, we have technology moving in such a way where we have to learn how to create manufacturing jobs right next to residential zones. These are the compatibility issues that I'm hoping can emerge. We can identify a workforce along the manufacturing base, industrial base that is green, but it's friendly to work with when we talk about how the city is evolving. We all want to run out of space, trying to figure out where to put housing, we want to sustain our manufacturing industrial zones, to move forward in this dialogue and this discussion that we find a way to create these jobs so they are near our homes, more importantly, establish the workforce and can be at these jobs. And just maybe we can start curtailing some of the impacts on our traffic, on our air pollution, and start a smarter city and more strategic city. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much. And this is the wave of the future, and, and Mr. Uh, Wesson um, has done an incredible job. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wesson, for your leadership on, on this issue. Uh, and thank you. Great job. Uh, so I would like to. Uh, if the public hearing has been held, we announce those people who are here with support and ask them to, to stand. Uh, I, I think, yes. uh, uh, Madam President, we had some amendments that I'm going to withdraw, and then after because I want us to pass this today, and then I will reconsert those. Great, okay. So we'll just thank you. We just want to read the names of the people who were here today. Um, uh, the amendment has been withdrawn at this point. Kate Gordon, Kevin Norton, Jane Paul, Daniel Zingviejo, uh, uh, Linda Delt, Jennifer Gantanton, Jason Elias, Candace Kim, Elsa Bartlett. Thank you. Uh, we're going to see if we can their position on uh, Matthew Dowd and Alan um, Zuma Dowd. With that, and with other speakers on the queue, um, if we could open the roll on this item, close the roll, and tabulate the votes. Four lines. Congratulations. Um, today 
but not think about what the jobs are. And I've seen so many cities in this country pass an environmental regulation and not think about who's going to do the work. We see states bringing folks in from out of state to do their construction work. We see green jobs program where people are trained for jobs that don't exist. This program brings together the goals of creating the demand for new energy efficiency and renewable resources with the goal of actually getting folks in our communities to work on those projects, rebuilding Los Angeles to be a more sustainable place. It is a fantastic model for the country, and I congratulations to all of you who helped make it pass. Cheryl Parisi, who's the executive director of Ask Me 
And you know, Lenny has been very involved in the Apollo Alliance. Cheryl is the executive director of Ask Me, they're public sector workers here in Los Angeles. And also she's a leader in the coalition of city county unions here in LA. This is Cheryl. Today shows us that real change does come from the bottom up, from the grassroots. 